My name is Nicasia Cook. I'm the site manager. I've been working for Belize Audubon Society for 15 years. Uh, the Belize Audubon Society, along with other partners, um, New York Geological Society at that time, which is, no, which is now known as WCS Wildlife Conservation Society, along with um, other um, conservation-oriented people, um, sat down along with the government to to request to lobby that um, this place should be set aside as a protected area because it's unique and uh, it could be something important for the Belizean people in the future. Um, but because um, conservation is a new concept, um, they didn't understand the reason really why they should set it aside as a particular area because there was a community that we're trying to establish in this area here. Uh, they wanted to live here, they wanted to do their livelihood because the forest is so rich with wildlife. Um, the soil was so fertile, the river was close by and therefore this, they saw that you know they can do their livelihood here and establish a little community. But nevertheless, um, in 1984, uh, the research ended and uh, so they started to lo lobby with the government uh, for this year to be given a protection status. And in 1986, that is when it became protected. So from there on, you know, they approached the government of Belize and uh, they started to, to tell the government that this place is unique, that it could be beneficial for the, gov uh, the, for the people and government of Belize. And uh, so they had to come up with a management plan to, to convince the government uh, how they can manage this place. And so that was done and uh, activities that they come up with uh, to show the government, to prove to the government that this place could be managed through this, these activities, one of them is um, ecotourism and that's what we are doing now. And uh, in its surrounding, uh, Placencia, Hopkins, the nearby communities, you know, these communities are, are are mostly into tourism, like Red Bank, for instance, the Scarlet Macaws are there. And so people are coming to nearby because of this place, Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, we have seen a lot of tapir, so we do have a healthy population of um, wildlife in Coxcomb. And uh, besides wildlife, we also have uh, natural sceneries, um, attractions like the waterfall you know so when someone come to Coxcomb you know they can go to, uh, hike to the waterfall enjoy swimming there enjoy the view uh, you can also do river tubing we have a river the South Stan Creek River which is nearby where you can just you know get a tube and just float down the, the river for 40 minutes you know so um, you can also do night hike here, you know, looking for jaguars because jaguars are nocturnal and uh, most of their prey are nocturnal as well. So when you are hiking in the night, you, you tend you get to see other wildlife as well. Uh, Coxcomb is a place where I think one should visit and uh, you will never know what you are going to see there. You know, there are so many things to, to exciting things to, to see.